We're going to talk about ownership here, because this seems to be like a sticky topic to the world. People don't like it when I talk about these things, but I have to. I mean, I really, I get no choice. You know, the Spirit has got a hold of me, and I just have to You're going to shout from the mountaintops. So, this is not a popular one. This is not, for those of you that are seeking enlightenment in a future lifetime, turn your set off now. This is not going to be good. The ego is not going to like this. So save yourself some suffering and turn your YouTube off or get shut the DV down right away because this is going to be nasty to the ego. So the first quote is, this is, Sarah put these quotes in. These are from the Course. This is from the Course in Miracles. Probably if you, if you leave the set on and you hear these, you, you won't buy the Course. So that's all right too. But we're living by these things. It is yours because it belongs to Him, capital H. For to Him, capital H, ownership is sharing. That's right, to the Holy Spirit, ownership is sharing. If you want to invest in ownership, you have to invest in sharing. And I mean really sharing. I don't mean sharing partially, or sharing some of the times, and I mean full, full sharing. In fact, when I've gone around the world to these 26 countries over these last 20 years, that's been my whole message, is let's share. It was the same message that they told us in kindergarten. In preschool, they taught us to share. Share your crayons, you know, share your little play toys, your little tools, and then clean them all up, and let's put your toys away, you know. But the sharing was part of that message in preschool, and then somehow, with the ego, it just gets lost, that this world does not seem to be big on sharing. It's, or it's like, share, but be careful what you share, and be careful who you share with, or you could really be in big trouble. <coughs> so then the next quote is, you want to speak, because you've been waiting to say this well, all day. Well, no, no, it was funny, because I was going through this, and just reading this line, I haven't heard it for so long, actually, I've read the course, but, ownership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you. <laughs> you know, just, yeah, it's a dangerous, yeah, that we really don't know what ownership is and how, yeah, it's very dangerous if I decide, you know, what ownership is or me owning anything or wanting ownership and... Yeah, I can, I mean, I can explain a little bit about that last part of the sentence. What does it even mean, ownership is a dangerous concept, if it is left to you? There's nothing dangerous about the concept of ownership. It's the ego's use of ownership for its own purposes to perpetuate itself that is dangerous. So if anybody's out there and, you know, and thinks that ownership is dangerous in and of itself, there's nothing dangerous, dangerous about the concept of ownership, but it's if it's left to you, meaning if it's left to the ego for its own devices, it will be a block to the awareness of love's presence because it's just being misused by the ego. The ego likes to own things for itself, you know. Its possession is, is its creed. It, it is the belief that love can be possessed, that things can be possessed, that anything can be possessed. And so, when people say, well, you know, you may say ownership is a dangerous concept, but, uh, you know, if you form a 501c3 and you have a board of directors or trustees or whatever, uh, and technically that run it, it's almost like those that board is, is, is using and controlling and owning those things. That board is a corporation and that board owns property, da 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 Aha! Uh -huh. You've gone against your very own teachings. No, we have not. Ownership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you. There's nothing wrong with having your name on a deed or a bank account or da 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 but part of messengers is, is washing the mind free of identity with the idea of ownership, of giving it over to the Holy Spirit and saying, you know, use me and use <clears throat> it for the glory of God. Use, use everything for peace of mind. Don't use anything for anything but peace of mind. That's a very specific use of everything. And so, for those, you know, I, I did hear a teacher years ago who was a course teacher and, and he was very much against ownership but he wasn't against renting and leasing. So it was like, it's okay to rent or lease, but you're not, it's not okay to own. That's not what we're talking about. We're not, 
We've got nothing against ownership per se, or, or against renting and leasing. It's like, this is all about who are you serving, what is it for, and letting that be given by the Holy Spirit. Just like Jesus taught, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and unto God that which is God's. You know, there are times when it seems like we have to, you know, have liability insurance for vehicles, or have driver's license, or, you know, buy an insurance policy, even though for years I've talked about insurance is only a bet against yourself and so on and so forth, that with the church and with everything that we're stewarding for the church, we are simply following the guidance, and that guidance is meant to be a stewardship of the, of the funds, of the resources, properties, whatever, for this peace of mind, and that's why we're doing it. It's the same thing with the concept of membership. We could say, membership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you. All these years with Awakening Mind, I've taught that there, there is no such thing as membership. If you choose to consider yourself a member, of the foundation, you can, if you choose not, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But these are concepts that, that are just symbols that are used by the world and by agencies of the world and so forth. And, and we really are about letting it all be used for the glory of God and not getting caught in the, the concepts. Messengers of Peace are about living a life of guidance, non-possession, non-ownership, peace of mind. And so the church is just a symbol or a reflection of that. So, when we say owned by the church, again, that's stewarded by the church, by the living experience of the Holy Spirit. And we're talking about stewardship, we're talking about purpose. What is the purpose for it? There's nothing special about owning or leasing or renting. We're not trying to make any distinctions, but, but when we look at things here, where things have been donated or purchased with donated funds, it's for a very fine-tuned and focused, like a laser beam, purpose. Mm -hmm. This is not about a purpose of waste. It's not about purpose for using it for self-aggrandizement, uh, for grandeur, as he talks about in the Course, for pride, you know, for look at me, look at us, look at what we've done. We're not into any of that stuff. This is just basically used to undo the ego. Actually, we there was a, an experience just recently where we had a whole bunch of people coming and they wanted to donate donate everything. Remember, there was uh, Anna Carol and different people saying, "Oh yeah, I'm going to come to the monastery and I'm going to donate everything." And you know, like like that's not what the monastery is about. It's not about people coming and selling all that they have and coming here and living in community. You know, that's really not the purpose of what we're doing. So it's like even donations that are coming in are very guided, you know, and huge decisions that people are making. I mean, this is huge um, decisions. And so it's like, like what really does serve the whole here? And does that really serve the whole? Because we're not interested in money and, and even people's wanted to donate. I don't even know what different things that we said. Do we really do we really need that? You know, that, that does that really serve the whole? You know, so it's really everything is very, very guided. And yeah. So it isn't about, yeah, just getting, we'd have nothing to get. It's just, yeah, in the helpfulness of how the donations can serve the whole. And if it serves, you know, you know, just for the people that want to donate, is that, is that really helpful for you to do that? You know, and little steps and, you know, maybe a little tithing and, yeah, just what's most helpful for the whole. Yeah, so... Publicly, we, we may say on the website um, <clears throat> that the ministry, the monastery, the ministry, the foundation, whatever, is supported solely by donations. What does that really mean? Uh, do we really believe that there are a bunch of bodies out there and working at jobs and, and have bank savings accounts and checking accounts, and that we literally are supported by the donations? Now I'm going to say it now, I'm on the camera for everybody. That's something we put on the website, we are supported by donations, but we are truly supported by guidance. Mm -hmm. Guidance is our sustenance. Guidance of the Holy Spirit brings us the peace of mind. Do paper strips bring peace of mind? No. Do gasoline tanks and cars and properties and food going into mouths, mouths and teeth chewing on food and dig digesting food, does that sustain us? No. 
Uh, we are not sustained really by donations. We are sustained by guidance. And we work with people in following their guidance of their heart. They're, I mean, for years I have been offered things, and believe me, I don't know what Sai Baba went through, but I've had, I've had a famous rock star offer the use of his jet fleet of jet planes to fly me around to many more countries than 26. Uh, uh, Trey Anastasio of Fish, you know, I will fly you and your messengers years ago around the world so you can do gatherings in all the parts of the world and everything. You know, and there are other teachers that have gone to many different countries. I know Byron Katie's gone to many, many countries and it's been beautiful, but, but it's been guidance. The countries that David seemed to go to was guided. The places that David seemed to go to was guided. It was all based on guidance. It was not based on a need to spread a message to more countries and more languages. You know, I'm, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. There may be people who use translating the message into different languages as part of a backdrop for their mind training, like our friend Albert in China who's translating all of our materials and now wanting to translate even MMT and all these things into Chinese uh, Mandarin. There are people like Patricia and Maria in Argentina and, and, and uh, countless others that, that are translating into Spanish and, and the same with Europe and so forth. But it has not been about reaching countries and reaching people and having words translated to other countries. The presence of God is not a matter of language. You know, the words are just starting points to go much deeper into an experience. So, what we're talking about here is that we are sustained by guidance. And that guidance has seemed to take the form of donations, of time, of properties, resources and everything. But it's really not about that. Bodies, you could say, are sustained by green paper strips and, or metal disc and by money and credit card donations and so forth and by time and everything. But, but it's truly about guidance and, and that is really the core of what this whole message is. And I feel really grateful that I have had a, a great connection with the Holy Spirit and I seem to be drawing forth witnesses in my mind to others who are connecting with the Holy Spirit, you know, through through words, through music, through dance, through art, through many, many different ways. And I'm, I'm so grateful for all those witnesses. But I do see that it's not people and resources and money as the world judges it that is behind all this. It's purely about the guidance. And that is what will set you free. It's not any attainment of anything in this world. You won't ever reach a point with materials or resources or possessions where you can say, ah, my cup has finally filled up to the right point and now I am truly free. It's truly the guidance to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, to see that the world I see holds nothing that I want. What a great state of mind to be in while the Spirit is using the symbols of the world that you don't truly need them or want them. They are just being used for peace, by peace. And the experience of peace is all that you have, then that's truly what enlightenment and self-realization is. So, we just put it on a website, that as, as far as um, being sustained by donations. But we truly know underneath that is mm. it's the guidance. We're not an organization. <laughs> we're not a structure. We're not, no, we're not any of that. We're just called by God into mysticism, and into stillness, and into prayer. And all of this has come about as a way of supporting that. And so everyone who's drawn to come here, you know, from the, from the outset, it can look like, oh, it's an organization and how does it work and, you know. But it's really not about that at all. It's about just connecting in this presence and this prayer and then and being aware of what's helpful to support that. I just have to share that. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's part of a bigger context about about what what it means to support messengers or me is mm -hmm. it's not about a person like you said at the beginning it's it's about a presence and what yeah. serves the whole yeah yeah just constantly being in that prayer of how can I serve you know what is most helpful and knowing that that's always for the whole so.